Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Baumgartner. I'm here from the University of Colorado, and I'm going to introduce uh, our uh, shared task, which is going to be based on the craft corpus, which has been developed in our lab over the last uh, few years. Uh, so the Colorado Richly Annotated Full Text Corpus, otherwise known as CRAFT, uh, has, is publicly known as uh, 67 full-length documents from the PMC Open Access subset. Um, and it's annotated over a variety of different uh, axes, including uh, various syntax, uh, semantic, and other formats. Um, there's always been 30 articles that we've held uh, privately uh, for or with the idea of doing a shared task. So we're thankful to the BioVinyl POST organizers for allowing us to finally uh, use these in the form of a shared task. And uh, we're actually going to propose three uh, tasks on craft that mirror kind of the major annotation axes that we've done on it. Um, so there's going to be one on structural annotation, one on concept annotation, and one on co-reference. Um, and what we would love to see out of this are, are participants who maybe not just focus on one aspect, but maybe use um, the different axes to support each other. And so uh, we're trying to come up with ways to incentivize this. And one, and one thought is to have um, a different leaderboards for, for those that integrate, say, um, concept annotation and maybe uh, the, the structural annotation task. Um, so uh, I was. Uh, it was neat to hear uh, Nico this morning talk about uh, your your thoughts about trying to use NER into uh, to help improve dependency parsing. And it's kind of a nice segue into our first task here, which is going to be um, trying to reproduce the dependency parses uh, in uh, in Craft. Um, and uh, I think the this. The input is going to be uh, gold standard sentences, tokens, and parse speech tags, and the evaluation is going to be the standard uh, metrics used by uh, Connell. So just to give a sense for what uh, Craft has here, the, the public release um, has a little over 21,000 sentences. Uh, so the, the test corpus is about um, a third. We'll add about a third to that. Um, and uh, we can see uh, additional details um, in this paper here, and I'll have a reference for that at the end. Uh, and uh, Karen Verspoor has a recent paper that looks at uh, using neural models um, for dependency parses uh, and specifically evaluated over craft. So that may be of interest to participants as well. Uh, the, the second task is going to be a concept annotation task. Uh, so craft. Uh, has been annotated using uh, 10 uh, ontologies from the, the open, bio, open Biomedical Ontologies. Uh, and um, the, uh, <laughs> the evaluation for this will be uh, a, a semantic precision or recall metric. So uh, one of the, the reviewers of our proposal recommended uh, your method, Robert, uh, from 2013, so I'll be looking at that, I think, while I'm here, uh, and then as well as maybe some other possible metrics to use for this. Uh, so to give you a sense for the concept annotation and craft, um, so these numbers are for the, the, public, uh, the public distribution thus far. So there's over 100,000 total concept annotations, roughly 1,500 <laughs> annotations per article. Um, you can see the 10 uh, ontologies that are listed here. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is that the the, the ontology or the annotation guidelines used uh, require there be um, the concept be explicitly mentioned within the corpus. Um, and uh, so Mike Beta has been uh, kind of riding herd over all this concept annotation work, and uh, he's got a couple of papers here which really go into the detail. Uh, about the concepts, but to give you a feel for what it looks like, so here's a snippet of text from Craft. Um, the various colors here represent different ontologies, uh, and this is this is a slide of Mike's, and he likes to show all the all the various uh, annotations that uh, are made in, in this 
portion of text. Um, so we're actually going to do uh, divide the concept annotation task into two subtasks. So one is just to identify classes from the oboes as um, as they can be found on the obo foundry. Uh, but during the course of this annotation, Mike found that creating some extensions to the oboes really helped in terms of uh, consistency of annotation. Uh, and so he has come up with, uh, and, and the other annotators have come up with uh, a bunch of extension classes, he calls them. Um, and so we're going to have a second subtask that will be to identify classes from the oboes, but also including these extension classes. And to give you a, a sense of what these extension classes are, they're, they're really just uh, other ontology classes that have been defined logically using uh, classes that already exist in the oboes. And they've been used uh, for various purposes. Uh, one is to unify semantically equivalent classes. Uh, so an easy example there is um, he's defined an extension class that unifies the cell concept that's in the Go cellular component ontology and the cell concept that's in the uh, cell type ontology. Um, they've been used to uh, unify classes um, to allow for uh, ambiguity of definitions and to create abstractions. Uh, and then uh, I think less often, but to create more specific concepts than there are for some uh, classes in the ontologies. Uh, so to give you just an example of one, here's an example of uh, an extension class created as an abstraction for two other classes. So he's created a class uh, called Calcium. That's the, uh, the extension of the Kebby classes, Calcium Atom or Elemental Calcium. Uh, and it's important to point out that uh, calcium atom and elemental calcium, neither of them subsume each other. So uh, when the annotators are reading through text, they would either, you know, before this extension class existed, they would have to either choose one or the other, depending on what they thought uh, was correct. And, and I think, as you can imagine, uh, there's potential for uh, dis disagreement there. Um, so that was the concept annotation class. So our third task will be uh, based on uh, the co-reference annotation that's available in Craft. Um, and the goal will be to reproduce uh, the identity chains and uh, a positive relations that are in Craft. Um, and there's well-established metrics for evaluating this. Uh, and to give you a, a sense of what we have, so Craft, uh, a couple of definitions here, I guess. Craft defines co-reference as two or more remarkables that refer to the, th to the uh, same thing. Um, and our, uh, so we're gonna look at these three sentences abstracted from Wikipedia just to uh, help define our terms here. So remarkable in the case of craft is the smallest unit of annotation, which are base noun phrases highlighted in the gray here, um, and identity chains are sets of markables that co-refer. And so in, in this case, there's one identity chain, uh, which is composed of the P53 gene, uh, the word it, and then P53 again. Um, and then the a positive, a positive relation in the sentence uh, refers to it and the guardian of the, the genome. Um, so there are uh, 24,000 identity chains in craft. Uh, most of them are on the order of four um, in, terms of, in terms of length, but there are some rather long ones as well. Um, yeah, so just to recap, uh, we're proposing kind of three tasks, one that, that has two subtasks, um, and then kind of in quotes, a fourth task that will hopefully um, incentivize folks to take some integrated, integrated approaches. Um, and then at the completion of the shared tasks, uh, the remaining 30 articles uh, and their accompanying annotations will be released to the public. Um, here's some kind of primary references, uh, an overview 
book chapter, uh, and then some task uh, specific papers that would be helpful for participants. Um, and then uh, this kind of gets to uh, Lynette's cost of annotation, this slide. So here's all the people who have uh, worked on the various uh, aspects of craft or, or folks who have worked on, on more than one. Um, but it's a, an army of, of effort that went into this. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to thank the BioLMP OSD committee uh, for inviting us and for our reviewers for their helpful comments. Thanks.